What's up, my friends? We're talking best bets for Thursday night football. We're going to look at all quarterback props, all running back props, wide receiver props, and we're going to look at the game bets. Going to be a loaded show talking about pick them as well. So stay tuned. Let's get it. All right, let's start off looking at MySparyEdge.com. Game total looks at 49 and a half on Fliff. If you like the under, going to be the highest line. Best odds will be minus 110, take the half point. If you like the over, you go the opposite direction. Penny's got it at 48, minus 117. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. We're going to be looking at all these player cards. We're going to be doing some alt line betting, talking about the different betting angles. We're looking at all of these players today. So we'll start with the quarterbacks. Of course, we've got Jaden Daniels, the upcoming rookie of the year. He's going to win on a landslide, in my opinion. And then Jalen Hurts playing some good football right now. He's got A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. These guys are healthy. Saquon Barkley opening up the passing lanes with an elite rushing game. So let's look at their markets and let's make some picks. Three things. Number one, if you're new, subscribe. Seven days a week, there are videos or live shows on my channel. Number two, like the video. Support free content and I'll keep coming back for you. Number three, there's two premium links down in the description section. Exclusive. 50% off discounts. You can use the website here for all your betting research, and you can use the VIP picks link down below to get 15 plus premium channels, 10 plus sports covered, and eight plus cappers, including all of my picks. Both of those will cost a total of $25 for one full month. Find me a better value. All right, let's get to Thursday night football. So I'm looking at the passing yards market right now. We've got a 222 and a half, 220, 217 and a half passing yards for Jalen Hurts. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. You're going to get a good line it just depends on where you're taking it these odds are all pretty fair for both players right now i think the best thing we should do before we look at all of these player markets is simply go into their player cards and do our research as we're going along through the stream so Jaden daniels passing yards right now of course we can slide this around by using the slider if we want to do an alt line betting play today as well you'll see all the hit rates at the bottom and then we've got the game logs and snaps and all this stuff over here we can look at it now i'm zoomed in at like 250 percent if i get a little clunky with my movement today it's because i'm trying to make sure mobile looks nice and fresh for this show eagles defense has been nothing short of a lead as of late that's right at least statistically speaking four straight quarterbacks have hit the under on their passing yards market the eagles are at home on a short week which is going to be a really tough spot for the rookie on the road, short week against a good football team and a team that's giving up the seventh least passing yards in the NFL. And if you're thinking to yourself, okay, Mitch, let's just go to the passing touchdowns market. My friends, I'm sorry to tell you, the Eagles are also giving up the seventh least passing touchdowns. Okay, well, let's go look at the pass completions. He's going to be in a good spot, right? Okay, maybe the yards, the touchdowns. No, they give up the fourth lowest completion percentage this year. A measly 61% of passes have been completed against this eagle secondary so what do we do here with Jaden daniels are we taking any overs are we going to start looking at the under i'm actually semi-intrigued in the 41 and a half rushing yards line i don't know if i can make this official yet but here's my thought process if the washington commanders have trouble running the football on thursday night and they do drop back to pass a ton, or if the Eagles go crazy and they're up by 14-17 early second quarter, and then you feel like maybe the commanders are struggling to move the football, so they're just going to throw it a ton, well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to see my man here, Jaden Daniels, tucking and run a few more times. And when that happens, good things happen, statistically speaking, in the running game. Now, we had a weird game against Pittsburgh. They're a pretty darn good defense at getting after the quarterback. Only had three rush attempts, five total yards rushing. But most of the time, we're getting eight, eight, six, 11, eight, 12, 10, 16 rush attempts. Now, here's the other part of this, which makes me a little nervous, is he's dealing with those rib injuries, which, my friends, I think is clearly maybe keeping him from running the football as much with confidence. So I'm interested in this line. I don't know if I'm taking it officially. Let's move on to Jalen Hurts. There might be a play here for us. Now, on the flip side of things, the commander's defense has kept opposing quarterbacks on their passing yards market to the under in five of the last six games. They actually are allowing the fifth least passing yards per game. And oddly enough, opposing teams are throwing the football the least in the NFL against the commanders. That's right. 
under 27 pass attempts per game. So I don't know what type of volume we're getting from Jalen Hurts. And partially, I think this has to do with the fact that teams are running at will against the Commanders as they're giving up the third most rushing yards in the NFL per game. It's probably a Saquon Barkley week. We don't currently have an active market for Jalen Hurts for his pass attempts. I've typed in 27.5 for the pass attempts. It's been around 27 and a half, 28 and a half for a few weeks now. And if it opens at that line, I am slamming the under. This is the beauty of having this Tuesday morning show for you as I get to talk about what these lines are, what they could be, and what to do if you see it. So if that line opens at 27 and a half, heck, if it opens at 28 and a half, that's a one unit play with ease for a primetime game, which I don't do a lot of, to be honest. They're very volatile. I think this game could be more of a defensive battle than a lot of people think. It's a divisional game later in the season. So when this line opens, if we've got 27 and a half, 28 and a half, I think that's where it will be. I'm taking the under. If it's anything higher, I feel super confident and I love the play. Remember, commanders give up the least pass attempts per game, third most rushing yards per game. And Jalen Hurts clearly has been kind of taking a back seat to Saquon. And for good reason, we're about to look at him. There he is. This made no sense this past week. We'll go a larger screen there for you on mobile. Saquon Barkley was up against the Dallas Cowboys, who had backup quarterbacks in and out of the game, alternating through the second half. And Dallas was giving up 148 yards rushing per game, which was the third most in the NFL going into this game. So what did the Eagles do? They only gave Barkley the ball 14 times. Extremely annoying. We had Barkley over for rushing. That one shot me right in the foot. But that's kind of why I like going back to the well. We're on a short week. Now, if he had had the 27 carries he had against the Jags the week prior and then was going on a short week, I'd be nervous. He had 14 carries and he barely played in the fourth quarter. I think there's a really good shot that he's coming into this Thursday night game just about as healthy and refreshed as he could be coming into the game. Now, last week against the Steelers, the Commanders gave up 66 yards rushing to Jalen Warren, another 53 yards rushing to Najee Harris. Those two combined for 35 carries and 119 yards. Again, nobody throws the football against the Commanders. Russell Wilson had 28 attempts. That's it. And they just kept pounding the rock. Matter of fact, go back multiple weeks. I'm going to read these names off I wrote down for you. Tyrone Tracy hit the over on his rushing yards. Three weeks ago, DeAndre Swift hit the over on his rushing yards with 129. Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders combined for 86. Derrick Henry hit the over. Jerome Ford and Donta Foreman hit the over together. James Conner and Trey Benson both hit their overs. Chase Brown and Zach Moss both hit their overs. Devin Singletary hit his over. And Bucky Irving hit his over. We are literally talking about one team this season where the starting running back did not hit the over against the Commanders. There's been two weeks this season that the Commanders have held the opposing starting running back under their rushing yards player prop. Najee Harris did not hit his over, and Chuba Hubbard did not hit his over. But on the season, out of 17 total running backs with a rushing yards market against the Commanders, 13 of the 17, regardless of starters or backups, have hit the over. They're hemorrhaging yards to everyone. Opposing teams are averaging over 30 rushing attempts per game and almost five yards per carry. Another interesting angle is maybe looking at Saquon Barkley's longest rush for the week at 19 and a half yards. The Commanders, again, 17 running backs against them this season with yardage. Longest rushing markets, and my goodness, 13 of the 17 also cashed that. 4.9 yards per carry, third worst in the NFL. Over 30 rushing attempts per game, giving up the least pass attempts per game. Saquon is the answer this week. I like multiple markets. I will be alerting Discord what my Saquon Barkley official pick will be this week. I'm actually going to be skipping the Austin Eckler research as I was thinking about it. If Brian Robinson returns this week, I'll tell you this. His receptions market is not out right now, but if it opens around two and a half and Brian Robinson Jr. is healthy and back for Thursday night football, I'm taking the over two and a half for Austin Eckler. He has not been catching the football as much or getting as many pass targets out of the backfield as he has been to the de facto RB1 for this backfield for the last two games with no Brian Robinson. And junior, but if BRJ comes back, I made that up. If he comes back, we're going to get Eckler back in that third down role, back in the passing situation role. And again, if they are losing in this game or playing from behind in the second half, 
I think he's on the field more than Brian Robinson Jr. and goes back into that pass catching role, in which case I do like the over two and a half receptions. Now, Devonta Smith at 51 and a half receiving yards just seems like a superior value. Now, Devonta Smith only had three targets. You can see against Dallas, two catches, 14 yards, but the bounce back is real. And I think this week he does have that bounce back spot. Does he go nuclear? I don't know about that again. Commanders giving up the fifth least passing yards per game and the lowest pass attempts per game in the NFL. But I do think he can make the most out of his receptions this week. And his receptions prop is sitting at four and a half. Even if he grabs four catches, can he get 12 and a half yards per catch? If so, he's going to get it right around that 50 yard mark. Does he get down the field once or twice? Then the over is going to hit pretty easily, I think, in my opinion, at that 51 and a half yardage. You can see his longest reception at 21 and a half and check it out. I mean, he has these big catches uh, almost every week, 25, 19, 21, 45, 45, 46. So if Devonta Smith can get down the field once, maybe twice, I think the over 51 and a half receiving yards is a fantastic play. And if you are on FanDuel, you can actually alt that 50 plus if you want to do that. Give yourself two yard differential. You only lose about five cents on the overall odds. I'm taking the 51 and a half. I like it a lot. Let me show you the best odds and where to get them. I'm going to type in Devonta into the player search bar, and it's going to show me every single market of his. And you can see the 51 and a half is the aggregate odds, but there are better lines. Look at the 49 and a half, my friends. That's on FanDuel. Let me go to the receiving yards market just to make it nice and clear for you. 49 and a half. There it was. I knew that was around there for some reason. Over 49 and a half minus 114. I'm telling you right now, that's probably going to be the second official play. I already have a Saquon Barkley play I like, and I will give that away to Discord. I would call this my current Tuesday morning. I mean, we're more than 48 hours away from this game kicking off. In fact, we are close to 60 hours away from this kickoff. So, you know, take this for what it's worth. This is currently... Best bet number two, I'll say that. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, as I still have several players left to talk about for this game, do me a huge favor. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And again, if you want those VIP links, we got a lot to offer you, and it's a really affordable price point. Those discounts aren't going to stay forever. I'm probably getting rid of them in the very near future. So get them now if you haven't used it because they're going to be gone any moment here, my friends. Okay, let's move on. I've got a few more players to hopefully help you line your pockets for Thursday night football. All right, let's talk about A.J. Brown. I love A.J. Brown in primetime games. And boy, and boy, oh boy, are they making this 80 and a half receiving yards super tempting here. He's hit the over in five of six games this season. Had that one bad game against Jacksonville of all teams actually i believe now that i'm remembering he left that game with like a hip or a rib injury and did not come back that's probably why we got a downer here had a buck 09 against dallas last week seven targets does not need a lot of volume which is actually why i like him a lot because again the least pass attempts in the nfl against the commander so doesn't need a ton of pass volume he's getting about 25 percent of the market share and if you're going to give jalen hurts 20 four to 27 pass attempts well then you're looking at six to seven targets and of course seven targets 109 six targets 84 five targets 89 nine targets 116 10 targets 119 aj brown does not need a lot of opportunity to hit the overs and when we look at his long receptions market this is why he just continues to either bust loose or get down the field and get open, my friend. So while I do like Jalen Hurts and his pass attempts being under, I do like Devonta Smith at over 49 and a half receiving yards as well. There's a lot to love here for A.J. Brown. Now, I don't want to take an A.J. Brown receiving yards prop at the same time as taking Devonta Smith. While they both have hit the over clearly and a bunch of games together, I think truly the longest reception is probably the way that I would go with A.J. Brown. And here's kind of why Malik Neighbors, Jamar Chase, Zay Flowers, D.J. Moore, these guys have all had 27, 28, 41, 44-yard catches. Then you've got guys like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Bateman, Keenan Allen, Darius Slayton, all in the mid-20s for longest reception. It's not like the commanders are not prone to a big player to each game. 
And I put A.J. Brown up there with one of the best in the NFL with the longest receptions market in mind. So at 28 and a half, is it uncomfortable? Certainly is. We'll go over to the longest reception market real quick, and we're going to type in Brown. And there he is. He pops up 28 and a half yards. If you like the over, the best odds you're going to get look like minus 108 on Pinnacle. You can grab it on Better over there, one of the pick em apps at 27 and a half if you want that. Price fix there as well. Uh, you know, of course, you could just snag it on DK, minus 110. If you're stuck on Fliff, you got it at minus 120, so on and so forth. I do like this market. Is it official yet? <laughs> I don't know. I will alert Discord if it ends up being official for you. Terry McLaurin, F1, looks like he is really hitting his stride right now for the Commanders and definitely is starting to get some serious chemistry with Jaden Daniels. Now, he's another player that does not need a lot of targets, just like A.J. Brown. Six targets, a buck 13, eight, 125 is pretty solid. Six for 98, eight for 112, six for 100. He pops off, he has a dud. He pops off, he has a dud. He is very hard to nail down what to take. So my take for players like this is very much, if it's boom or bust, try to get the best odds you can, whatever market that is, for that player. While the receptions Jarvis market is at four and a half, the longest reception is interesting as well because he keeps getting down the field. I want you to go look at potentially this one, the receiving touchdown today, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to go over to the total touchdowns. We don't have one for A.J. Brown, but maybe we have one for McLaurin. And I'm going to show you why. I'm over here on the total touchdowns market. You can see A.J. Brown, a buck 35 over there on FanDuel. Very interesting. We can scroll down and we're going to find ourselves Terry McLaurin here. And if we just want to bring him up uh, cleanly, we can just type in his name and there you go. This is why I like this market. Instead of taking his yardage or his longest reception or his reception at a unit, I think I probably just sprinkle in like... 0.2 units on Terry McLaurin to score a touchdown at a buck 65 over there on Caesars or on Fliff for a buck 60. Heck, I could do the same thing with AJ Brown and have him at a buck 35 on FanDuel for a quarter of a unit. These are the types of plays I probably have end up investing into after my Barkley play and after my Devonta Smith play. Dallas Goddard returned after a month off of football, went out there and played Pretty much as normal snaps as they didn't need their starters to close out the game. Played 43 snaps. I think he clearly is going to be over 50 plus per game here as he's back to full health. 62, 69, 62 snaps in those first three healthy games. 5, 4, 11 targets for 4, 3, 10 catches, 170 yards. Uh, literally just no one saw that coming. But, you know, that means the upside is there. So with Goddard at two and a half receptions this week, I like him. I like him a lot, actually. If it's not going to be Devonta, if it's not going to be A.J. Brown, I think because Dallas Goddard has it at two and a half receptions, you know, it's not that tall of an order to ask him to go out there and get three catches. This is on my short list for what may or may not be official. Zach Ertz on the other sideline, eight targets last week, 11 targets against the Bears. Maybe, maybe this is starting to come to fruition a little bit in this offense because Jaden Daniels isn't running the football as much and Zach Ertz is becoming that tight end outlet. The receptions prop at three and a half has been incredibly incredibly sweaty this year he's had games of three and three and then four games with four receptions and again here we go we want to look at last five games it's a nice looking screen he's at the over in four or five but it, again it is very very sweaty now when we go back to this screen and we want to see what all the odds and receptions are in the markets we can type in reception so we just select it actually and we're going to type in Ertz. go e-r-t-z and you're getting pretty darn good odds, my friends. Over three and a half receptions, minus 114 for Zach Ertz. Very solid. Here's the deal. I don't know if I can make it official yet, but it is on the short list. Hopefully, this video has been extremely helpful to put you on the right path. I'm going to go to the Pick'em Optimizer real quick for NFL. Again, we have this for all these different sites. And I kept seeing better pop up. So let's see if there's anything there specifically on better. And you got one play at over a minus 130 aggregate odds here. Saquon Barkley, rush attempts, 18 and a half. Nothing else I want to take mathematically. Let's slide over to prize picks. And there you go. 
Well, you got place for Sunday already. <laughs> Jared Goff, minus 133 aggregate odds, 230 and a half total passing yards. You can open up this player card, take a peek if that's what you want to look at. And you can see hit the over last game against Houston. Not a guy that throws a ball a ton. We had the under 30 and a half pass attempts that cashed out. Is that line there? No, we don't have a market for him yet. Well, anyways, doesn't look like we have anything good to play on the pick apps just yet. That's because you don't have a ton of lines that have dropped. If this video was helpful, please do me a favor. It's Monday through Sunday. I'm here. Live streams. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you get primetime videos and Sunday best bet videos. That's four videos a week and four streams per week, my friends. Jammed into eight days. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. And again, the VIP things down below. 50% off. Uh, $9.99. $14.99. I mean, I keep this as affordable as possible. What you watched me using today, you can use it on your own for less than 10 bucks. Or if you just want the answer sheet and you want us to give you the picks, the plays, the research, you grab that VIP link down below and we'll take care of you in there, my friends. I appreciate you for being here and checking out the channel. Thank you very much. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Let's get paid. <music>